Praise the Lord. Praise Him. Praise the Lord. Praise Him. Hallelujah. So our theme today is is my sacrifice sufficient? A very, I want to say, touchy thing to say. A very touchy thing to think about. Because we all sacrifice something to some extent. But what I want us to focus on today is what the Word of God is saying about things that pertain to God. Things that we make up in our minds belong to God. Things that we offer to God ultimately are sacrifices to God. Now the scripture starts at verse uh, chapter 5 and moves on. And it reads a little unusual and I say it because of this. For the first two verses we have a man and a wife who've sold their possession. We all have things that are ours. There are possessions. There's nothing wrong with selling a possession. The second verse goes on to say that they kept a part back. And gave another part to the church. We all have a salary. We all have income. And rightfully so, we give a certain part to the church and we keep a certain part for ourselves. Is that not so? Listen to where the scripture starts to get a little bit strange. Verse 3 says, But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? So to understand what Peter means by that, we actually have to go back just a couple of verses in the previous chapter because this is the time where the body of Christ was beginning to grow and people were starting to join themselves to the apostles to support the ministry new believers were being added on to the chain of faith and an agreement was made so chapter 4 verse 32 talks about the agreement and it says and the multitude of them that, be that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But they all had things common. And I will jump straight to verse 34. Neither was there anything among them that, neither was there any among that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought these things, the prices of these things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet. So there was an agreement between everyone that was in the camp. Whatever I had, whatever you had, we wouldn't stand back and compare and measure and say, okay, I'll give this to so-and-so, that to so-and-so, and maybe a piece for the church but of one mind the Bible says of one heart they came together and said we will sell all that we have and give this unto the church why because we recognize that the ministry is growing there is something greater in the church than what I have out in the world and so I want to sell out and buy sell out all that I have that belongs in this world and buy into the ministry of Christ not just with my heart but with my possessions and listen to how chapter 5 starts. And this is how we know a confusion is about to happen in the body of Christ. It says, but. There is no and. There is a but. In other words, everyone was in one accord. One agreement that we were going to sell out from the things of the world. And buy into the God, things of God. And listen to what happens. But. Here comes Ananias and Sapphira, his wife selling all that they had as a matter of fact the Bible doesn't even say they sold all they have listen to what the Bible says they sold a possession we're not talking about everything so it's not like Ananias and Sapphira have nothing left they, it said they sold a possession and when they sold the possession I need to stop right there so we understand what this thing called sacrifice is all about in days gone by God established a sacrifice 
for the atonement of sin, for peace offerings, for various things did God establish a sacrifice. And so me and you, when we had our issue, we would bring a lamb, a goat, something of the flock to the camp, to the entrance of the camp over here. The Bible says that we would place our hands upon it and it would be slaughtered and the priest would then take the sacrifice from us and move towards the altar so it could be burnt and sent up to God. In doing that, once we brought our sacrifice to the tent, it was removed from our hands and now transferred into the priest. And the priest would then bring our sacrifice to the altar mm -hmm. so that it may be sacrificed up to God. And men in their smartness and all those in all of our wisdom and our conceit, we took the sacrifice and we made sport with it. Because a man realized that if the law says that I sin and I can take a goat and sacrifice that goat and suddenly my sin is good, my sin has been wiped out, that's a formula for success. Let me plan out my calendar all of the sins I'm going to commit <laughs> and make sure that I have 10 goats for the 10 sins that I'm going to do. Yes. And as soon as I do my sin, run get that goat. Bring the goat. They put my hand in it. Give it to the, to, the, to the priest to be sacrificed. And I am clean. A formula for success. So my sin is no more because I'm going to buy a million sheep and commit all the sins in the world. And the Lord saw the conceit and the ignorance and the deceptiveness of men. And he said, no, I will not accept the sacrifices. Behold, all of the, the bulls and the cattle upon the hill, they are mine. Will I eat the flesh of goats or drink the blood of bulls? If I were hungry, I would not tell you because the earth and the fullness thereof is mine. Yes. So how can man bring sacrifice to God to satisfy God? No. God did that as a way to help us out, mm -hmm. to make it easy for yes. us to overcome the things that would prevent us from being close to him, from walking in holiness with him. The things that would cause us to stumble, he gave us a way to overcome them. So he sent the ultimate sacrifice John 3.16 says that God so loved the world he that he gave his son Hallelujah. that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Behold the Lamb of God Hallelujah. that takes away the sins Hallelujah. of the world. Hallelujah. So God sent the ultimate sacrifice down. An unblemished land, lamb without sin to die on Calvary Cross for you and me. And I have news for us. When that happened, sacrifices became so much more difficult. Because no longer could we just drop a sheep off by the entrance of the camp and pass it off to the priests to be sacrificed. When Jesus came, the veil of the temple was torn, yes. which gave men free access to approach the throne of grace. Yes. That means you now had free access to bring your own sacrifice to the altar, right? The problem with that we see happens in verse 3. And the scripture declares, But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? So to put this in layman's terms, in a way that we could understand. Before Ananias and Sapphira would have brought a lamb to the gate, placed their hands upon it, and given it to the priests. Jesus came and he died for all mankind. His blood, his spirit, he pours upon all flesh. So now they have free access to bring that goat in. And as Ananias and Sapphira are bringing the goat in, Behold, the devil comes. Look back at your goat, Ananias. What happened to the goat? Look how fat that goat is. Hmm. You know you have parang happening this Christmas and a house full of people coming to feed. Mm -hmm. Look at the goat that you left in the other tent for yourself. Look how small and dingy that goat is. And you're going to give this fat, plump goat to do what? They're going to burn it. 
They're just gonna kill it. Why do that? Hold on to this goat. Yeah. Get the measly and dead goat and <laughs> sacrifice that instead yes, and Lord. keep the fat goat for the farm. Yes, mm -hmm. Because you want to have a nice time. You want people to eat and to drink and enjoy themselves. You're still sacrificing to the Lord, you know. But does the Lord say he doesn't need to eat and drink? No. So why should I give him the fattest that I have? No. So too is what happened with Ananias and Sapphira. They made an agreement with the body of Christ mm -hmm. that we are going to sell out all that we have and buy into the Lord. And behold, when they sold, and to see the price of the money, and to see what that possession bring in, that money was so nice, they couldn't bear in their heart to give the whole thing to disciples. Them is just disciples. What are they going to do with all this money anyway? I had 10 kids I need to feed. I have a whole household. I have bills to pay. I have a mortgage. I have two car notes. You know, not one. I have two. Let me pull some back and keep it for myself. And I'll give them, I mean, I'm supposed to give them 10%. Let me give them 20. Look, they have a whole 20. Not 10, 20. And I'll take the 80%. And everything is good. Is that not so? What's wrong with that equation? Nothing wrong with that equation because that is an equation we made between us and ourselves. We didn't consult God. We didn't look at the word. We're not talking to the body of Christ. This is between us and my... As a matter of fact, this is between Ananias and his wife. They said, let's hold back some of the money so that we could make our lives more comfortable, so we could make our living easier. All these bills, every month you're going to the Lord crying, and yet behold, there's money. What, 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 what is, I think someone says, in the abundance of water, the fool is thirsty. Let us not be fools. Let me take some of the water for me and keep it to ourselves. Yeah. And behold, as they came, the man of God recognized the sin because the Lord told it to him ahead of time. And so we see how God deals with this type of betrayal when we talk about sacrificing things to God. Now as we move away from the scripture for a bit, this is what happened back then. If you take back part of your sacrifice, the Lord might not cause you to drop down dead and to be buried right on the spot. But we sacrifice different things today, right? We no longer have to sacrifice animals and bloods of goats and all this type of stuff as the pastor said the sacrifices of God are broken spirit and a contrite heart right a clean hands and a pure heart the Lord is, shall never despise so we sacrifice our money we sacrifice our time we sacrifice our skill we sacrifice all types of things that can be considered sacrifices but if we're doing that, then how does any of this even apply? Because if I'm sacrificing, if I pay my tithes, right, that's a sacrifice. How, how does this scripture apply to any of that? If I come and help out in the church, or I help out in the ministry, how does any of that apply to this? It applies in this way. Because when we make up our minds to do something for God, that thing has already been committed. It's already been registered. There's an expectation. Things have started to happen because this commitment that you have made with God is about to be made manifest. Just like how in the beginning of the minist of, of, of when the body of Christ is starting to grow, people made commitments. And so there's an understanding between you and God. This is the purpose. And by the way, when they sold their possessions, there are people who had much and there are people who had less. And because they sold everything, those who had much had a little less. And those who had little now got to receive. So the possessions wasn't to make the disciples rich, but it was actually to distribute through the body of Christ so that we could all be a strong ministry and in one accord. No one has to look at each other for envy, for fame, for arrogance, for pride. But instead, today, we have different issues with our sacrifices today. Because we say, and I'll start with money because money is the easiest thing to attack. We say, Lord, I need a job. Lord, I have bills. Lord, I have problems. Lord, I have situations. The Lord grants you the job. 
The book of Malachi 3.10 says that we rob from God. Why? Because we don't pay our tithes and our offerings. What's your tithes? 10%. Let me tell you something. 100% of every single thing that you have, have had, or will ever have is God's. 100%. And he says... Give me 10%, not because I'm God and I need your money, but because I have established a church in each and every one of your lives that needs to function. I have placed ministers and leaders within that church that need to function. Your 10% makes that process works good so that when a certain time is reached, you can come together into one place, not to eat the Lord's Supper, but to come together and break bread with your brothers and sisters, to worship God, to have healings be performed, to have teachings to be done, to have all manner of things fixed in your life. That's what I need your 10% for. You do that, and I will give you the 90% that is already mine, but I'm going to give it to you so that you can have a happy, comfortable, and peaceful life. And when it comes to that 10%, we can remember all things that need to get done a bill that six months old yeah well this bill had to get paid somebody that you borrowed money from two years ago well you know i need to pay this person back because it's been two years all manner of stuff every single thing comes up and so we say lord yes i know you gave me that job and everything and lord yeah i kind of hear you in that 10 percent but lord these bills these circumstances these situations lord i can't smell yeah, i can't give you this 10 percent you know, um, maybe who won? A two percent, Lord. Two percent. That's something, right? Lord, hold something, and I'll keep the rest. And in time, we'll organize the suit. In time, when I'm good, when my money running right, when the bills look, then I'll see about you. And so we don't understand that a sacrifice is a sacred thing. A sacrifice has power. Behold, Exodus chapter 20, the 24th verse says, When we sacrifice to God, guess what he does? He comes unto us to bless us. Your sacrifice is a blessing. When you choose not to sacrifice, you choose not to be blessed. When you choose to hold your money back, you choose not to be blessed by God for giving him something. And so when we talk about that simple 10%, that the Lord says, give unto me. In comparison to this whole 90% that he's allowing us to keep. And even that we hold back. That's just money. That's, that's money. Money comes and goes. That's not a big deal. If we hold stuff back like that, we're in problems. But it gets a lot more serious than money. Because money, I said I'll talk about that first. Because that's the easiest thing to talk about. What about when it comes to our spiritual walk? What about when it comes to do something in the house of God? What about when the Lord tells you to do something specific? And you say to yourself, well, Lord, thank you for the vision. I know I'm still connected. I know I still have an open connection because God's still talking to me. But if I do this, Mother Daphne might look at me in a strange way. <laughs> Pastor Mike might say I'm playing church. This Brother or sister, my kind of show kuya mode when I start operating. So, Lord, thank you for the vision. Lord, it looked it look like true, true spirit. But because these people are going to say all kind of things about me, Lord, I can't do it. I know you gave me the vision, Lord. I know it's true, true spirit because he ting you show me a field in my soul. But I don't think I could do it sacrifice because you refuse to sacrifice how do you expect God to bless you that's as I say it a, a, a line came to mind when my kids are misbehaving I tell them I can't reward you for being bad I can only reward you for being good if you're bad I have to punish you or else you'll think that being bad is acceptable but when I punish you you'll know that being bad is not good so that when you're good and I give you a reward, I'm training you. I'm training you to do the right thing. Right? Let's move on. When angels made appearances to people in days of old, they would receive what the angel said. 
and say, wait here, please. They would run into their household. They would kill a lamb. They would prepare it and bring it together and bring it out as an offering, right? As an offering to the angel that spoke to them because they were appreciative. In, in most cases, it was a peace offering. Some cases, the angel would burn it on the spot. There was no altar, but they would burn it on the rock. So it would be clear. And so in doing that, there's a sense of peace. There's a sense of respect. There's a sense of acknowledgement for the words of God that came through that angel, that came through that prophet, to the person that received it. We don't do that to, uh, today at all. When a man or a woman of God comes to us and they give us a message a message from God whether it's to change something whether it's to clean up something whether it's to do something different we say thank you and we go about our business and we choose whether to take that advice or not well that wasn't for me you know the message was sent through someone who might not necessarily be your best friend or your best acquaintance, or someone who you have a lot of respect for. Nonetheless, it was a message sent from the Lord for you. You listen to it. Yes, it sounds good. But, you know, not everything is for everybody. This might be for someone, and something else might be for me. So I will pick and choose what makes sense for me. That's the first problem. The second problem is, there is no peace offering. There is no gratitude for a message from the Lord. And I bring it up to say this. Sometimes our sacrifice is just being kind and showing kindness to a brother and sister for a good thing that they did unto us, for worshiping the Lord, for, for just doing the right thing. Sometimes we just have to bless people from our own substance, not just on the spot, but go in and dip into your household. How often... How often do we, as brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, invite each other over to each other's house to break bread and to talk about things? You know, just, just talk. We, we are supposed to be a family, right? We're supposed to be a body of Christ. How, how often do I say to Mother Shirley, Mother Shirley, come. Come over to my house. Let's just, let's just have dinner. Just talk. Be friends. Be committed to each other in the body of Christ, right? You're supposed to be, of course, an elder, but my spiritual brother and sister. And I'm supposed to have this relationship with you. Does that relationship only exist on Sundays? Well, if it only exists on Sundays, then you're just my Sunday friend. We're not really, we're not part of a body. It has to be able to exist beyond that. And while that might be a bit much, let me, let me dial it down a bit. How often do we just call our brothers and sisters and say, how are you doing? How's everything? Do you need help with something? You see? Because when you ask someone if they need help with something, occasionally they'll say, no, no, everything's good. Everyone else will say, yeah, I have a problem, boy. And when you hear that, you're like, oh, shucks, I shouldn't have made that call. Because you know, now the games have to stop. The surface call of the reason why you called has now been found out. Because you can't call and jump off. All right, okay, then, so we'll talk, we'll pick up. No, now you have to stop and invest the choir. What is wrong? How can I help my brother and sister? You might have to pull your pocket. You already done told back your 10% from the Lord. You're giving the Lord 1%. That same 1%. Now you have to dip in your pocket to help your brother and sister in the Lord. Way boy. Pressure. Still, sacrifice an opportunity to give back this is what the Lord said to me he gives us forgiveness mercy and grace grace is unmerited favor that the Lord freely gives to us although we at times can be undeserving the question is how often do we give God forgiveness, mercy, and grace? How often do we forgive God for not being there for us when we thought he should have been? 
How often do we forgive God for all of the bad things that we went through as Christians? And God said he will neither, neither leave us nor forsake us, yet we went through some stuff. Where was God then? How many of us are still holding him in our hearts for that? How often do we show him mercy? Lord, I know you weren't there for me that time, but guess what? I know you're there for me at other times, and I don't care if you weren't there for me that one time, because in the end, I know you're always there for me. So let me forget about that. How often do we give him grace, which is our unmerited favor on him? I'm not talking about God's unmerited favor and blessings and all that fun stuff to us. We receive that 100%. If God blesses us a hundred times, guess what? Not once will we say, no, 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 Lord, hold back the blessing. Nah, good. We'll receive it all. But how often do we give God grace? Do we give him grace back? Our unmerited favor, regardless of whether we think he deserves it or not. How often do we bless him? And when we talk about sacrifice, yes, yeah, sacrifice is just whatever it is. That you want to give to God for his goodness for his mercy for his grace for the job for the house for the companion husband wife for the children for the blessings that he dealt you with for the circumstances that he's gotten you through for the pit that he's taken you out of for the murray clay that he's allowed you to overcome, for every door that was open, every chain that was broken, for all of these things a million times over from then until now and even to come in the future. How often are we willing to give God grace and to give him a simple sacrifice for all that he has done? And sometimes we, we, we really don't give sufficient. Um, and and I'll, I'll, I'll just use a, a, one last example. Sometimes the prayers is jumping, Holy Spirit moving, Dupshin, singing, grins, bell, I see some smoke pass, ting lights up, the service is in one accord. And maybe one or two people, not saying you have a problem, but you're just not feeling it. You're just kind of dear, you're dry, you're seeing people jumping up, you see a man in the back do a back flip. That's how powerful the Spirit is moving. And you just sit down dry, dry, dry like chips. And there's nothing moving you, nothing touching you. That, that's disrespectful. All you have to do is shake, clap, sing, stomp your foot. Just try to get in. Even if you don't feel it 100%, and I'm not saying to pretend, but just get on your mark. Just get on. And adventure through the course of time of you clapping and singing although you're not a hundred percent invested because the spirit hasn't touched you maybe God will make a way to kind of bring you in to see what everyone is seeing to feel this excitement that everyone else is feeling but because we are willing to sacrifice because of things like pride because of you know maybe the way I'm dressed or because of the way I sing because of ego. Well, they're not ready yet. They're not ready for me. My stuff is too high. They're just in this lower level. Because of arrogance, you refuse to just worship. We're not already paying our tithes 100%. You're not already listening to God when he comes to you in dreams and visions because you're studying your brother or sister next to you and what they're going to say if you do this. And even in the church, you mean just to worship? Just to, just to, you're already here. Why did you come? Why did you come? To sit down and to take up space? You came to worship. Get in the mindset of worship. Start there. Because a sacrifice is nothing physical. It comes from your heart. If your heart isn't there, then whatever sacrifice you're bringing doesn't materialize. When you have to pay a 10% tithe, that 10% doesn't come from your paycheck. It comes from your heart. You're already ready. Your heart is in re already indicted in the good matter. So you don't count pennies and nickels and dimes. You're not looking at percentages. I have something that I need to give to God. Boom, that's it. Your blessing is so sure. As my wife and I were discussing this topic, she was saying, 
sometimes we see people growing in the faith. They're growing in the spirit. They're coming up nice. When you check where they were before to where they are now, you see growth. You see improvement. But when you check yourself, I have been kind of here for the last, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 years. Um, I don't see that type of exponential growth on me. What, what, what kind of favoritism this is, God? What kind of favoritism this is, Mother Daphne? When all these people who just come rising up, and I've been here, I've been growing in my faith. Where, where is my blessing? And so, because we choose to look at something else, a next man's blessing, something else to distract us from serving God instead of focusing on God because sometimes you can't grow anymore because God has brought you up and you don't realize how much you have already grown doesn't mean your growth isn't there you just can't see it why because you're measuring your growth next to someone you might be up here and you see someone go from here to here hey look growth you're still here but you are always higher from, from, from what are you wasting your time doing I'm not talking to anyone here. I'm talking to us. These are issues that I go through as well. So don't think I'm, I know your business. And I come to true word for you. I don't know your business. I don't want to know your business. I'll call you to find out how you're doing every once in a while. I'll text you. How's everything? I'm not trying to get to know your business. But you are my brother and sister in the Lord. So every once in a while, not every day, not every week, maybe not every month, I'll just text you. How are you doing? Just to make sure you're still there. You know, but when we talk about sacrificing to God, and when we get back to the theme, is my sacrifice sufficient? I want to say this. Every little thing we do for Jesus is precious in his sight. Everything you decide to do for God is blessed. The problem happens when we say we're going to do something for God, then we kind of jump in the middle for, for whatever reason. So what we have to start doing is to start removing ourselves from our sacrifice. Start removing yourself from your time. If you're going to commit to come and clean the church, don't think about it. Just come and clean the church. If you're going to commit to pay your tithes, don't think about it. Don't watch, don't watch your bills. Just pay your tithes. If you're going to commit to do some good thing for a brother or sister in the body of Christ, don't think about it. Just do it. If God gives you a vision to do something for the church, in the church, by the church, don't study how it will look and how they will look at me and what they'll say of me and to say who you think he is. You play in church. You ain't reached there yet. Stay in your lane. Ignore all that talk because it's just talk. Because at the end of the day, your blessing was never between you and them anyway. It was always only between you and God. So the theme I realized after, you know, after the Lord t took me through is actually not so much of an important question because you should never ask if your sacrifice is sufficient. You should just sacrifice whether it's sufficient or, lot or not. Let the Lord decide. Yeah. Because if I determine what's sufficient based on my bills, 10% is way too much. The Lord could get a 5%. That's if I decide if it's sufficient. But when we step back and stop asking ourselves questions, stop trying to measure and just give, do, trust, walk by faith and not by sight, then the Lord just blesses us. And if you don't understand why, it's because you sacrifice. The book of Exodus says that. When you sacrifice to God, he blesses you. So if you see someone and their life is good, that's because they're sacrificing. Don't, you don't have to ask questions. You have to ask what type of magic they're doing, who they're seeing, which, which spiritual worker they went by to get that work. No, 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 just sacrificing. That's all. It's a formula. Just like how back in the day, the sacrifice, a physical sacrifice, right, allowed us to be free of sin. Today, your sacrifice gives you a blessing. So just sacrifice to the Lord. Um, whether your sacrifice is sufficient or not is irrelevant because at the end of the day, God has the last word anyway. And that's a prayer of my heart.